Hi, I'm Dr. Yosef with During, and today I want to talk about the safe way to start an antidepressant medication. So the first thing that you want to be mindful of is that you have some anxiety and depression that is at the level where you want to take the risk of uh, starting an antidepressant. And that's because these aren't benign interventions. You know, there are side effects and some of them are very serious. So um, things that you want to keep in mind are the common things, things like weight gain, which can be a big problem. However, there's also other issues such as um, less predictable things like, you know, developing post-acute withdrawal syndrome or PSSD where they're much rarer, but they're, um, they're kind of impossible to predict. So you want to make sure that you have a level of depression that really warrants this kind of treatment first. The next thing uh, that's important when safely starting an antidepressant is that you're informed of what the actual drug effect is. And just from my experience, you know, seeing other people do this and talking to patients, a lot of them don't actually uh, get counseled on this when they start it. And so the physician doesn't really tell them what to expect in terms of how the drug should be making them feel. And I think this is a byproduct of um, something we used to hear a lot, which was, you know, an taking an antidepressant is like taking uh, insulin for diabetes. It's this kind of, you know, the, these disease-centered treatments. So, you know, with diabetes, for instance, if you take, you know, if you develop it, you have to, you, you're not producing as much insulin, but don't worry, you know, we can bring some insulin into the body and it effectively takes over all the physiologic functions. So that's not really the case in depression um, because, you know, there's no consistent evidence out there that depression or anxiety is caused by, you know, deficits in serotonin or epinephrine or dopamine. So the way that these drugs are working is they're actually in um, producing this um, these, these changes in your neurochemistry, which are having this benefit, you know, if they're working well, you know, they're having this beneficial effect, they're having this drug effect. So what is the drug effect and what should, should you be looking for? Well, with the antidepressant type medications, especially the SSRIs, SNRIs, it's one of uh, emotional constriction. So this is really what I'm looking for in my anxious or my depressed patients. I want them to tell me that, um, you know, they're having less anxious ruminating thoughts, you know, they're less debilitated by their anxious thoughts, like that the volume has been turned down on them and it's at a level where it's a lot more tolerable. Um, so yeah, the medications, they work really well for, for anxiety and they work pretty well for depression, especially when it's a product of this anxiety, when people have so much ang ang anxiety that they're in this constant state of fight or flight, that they become effectively depleted. They, you know, they become very fatigued and lethargic and apathetic because they're just overwhelmed with, with these anxious thoughts. So the effect that I tell people to look for is we want an effective mood constriction where the volume is turned down and you're in, you're in a state of calm. I don't typically see antidepressants kind of elevating someone's mood and making them happy. They are mood constrictors is how they really work. So after you tell someone what the effect is that the therapeutic effect that they're looking for, you want to counsel them on what it looks like when it's not working, you know, the adverse behavioral side effects. And this is the, the whole black box warning thing. And it's the idea that these drugs, they don't work consistently in all patients. And so one of the rarer side effects is that you can give someone one of these medications, which is meant to be calming and mood constricting, and it can actually make them more agitated. So you want to counsel patients about what akathisia looks like. So, you know, you might say if you start having obsessive ruminating thoughts, or if you start feeling a lot of restlessness, that's a bad sign. You don't want to double the dose. You want to stop the medication and go and see your doctor. You also want to counsel patients about the overshoot of the mood the mood constriction. So these medications, they can cause overblunting of your emotions, which can be um, counter-therapeutic as well. You might not care about things that you're supposed to care about. And so I tell people to watch for that. But really the most helpful thing with that is to is to make sure when someone's initiating one of these treatments is that a family member or a loved one knows what's happening because the patient may not notice that this effect is overshooting and, and that they're actually looking worse um, 
but a, but a family member or someone that knows what's going on is going to notice these things and say, hey, I think there's this kind of too much blunting going on. You really don't seem like yourself and, and you're, not, you're not doing well. You might think you're doing well because you're kind of very blunted, but you're really not functioning at the level where you, you, uh, I know that you can function at. So that's the other thing. Other side effects can be like an irritability. Um, this is more common, but you could tell people if you start getting more angry, short fused, then the medication's not really working like it should. And, you know, they should come in and you may need to consider taking a, a different one. So I think it's really helpful to talk to patients and their families about um, the, you know, what the kind of the therapeutic drug effect should be and what the, you know, the negative effects are. So I hope this is helpful. I hope it kind of gives you an idea of what to expect if you're going to take one of these medications and and you know, and then and now hopefully you can recognize if things are going wrong and you can go and talk to your doctor about it. So I hope this was helpful and uh, thanks so much for listening.